Hello and welcome to Astronomy Photographer of the Year, sponsored by Insight Investment. This is our live show coming to you from the brand new exhibition, which has just opened moments ago here at the National Maritime Museum, celebrating the extraordinary 2019 winners, which have just been revealed on a stage not far away from where I'm standing now. Now, however you're joining us today, we hope that the next half hour is going to give you a great insight into this competition, no pun intended. We will be speaking to our award-winning photographers. And coming up first, I'm going to be speaking to the overall winner this year. So, join me in a couple of minutes, and I'll be speaking to him. Do you want to? Okay. Do you want to send Laszlo out? All right. We're going to be. Uh, I'll. I'll just look at you. Well, 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 I have to. Add, I, so, uh, this, this direction. This direction. Should I look? If, if you just look to me, yeah. So, I'll just okay. look at you. Yeah. I've got some questions on my phone here, so do wow, excuse so me. So much. I'm looking down. Uh, I've got uh, five questions. Yes. <laughs> and I'm very excited about your answers. Genuinely. It's, um, yeah, it's really interesting. I mean, the, your, both your images this year, you, well, yeah, last ever robotic scope. I don't think we'd announce that when you well, entered. What does that mean? Uh, it's we'll last, we'll, we won't have that prize and next year. It's You're just the last an apex of its kind of image. It's prize where science prize. We'll and, it. and art actually yeah. came together, where we'll the science could influence the art and the art brought out the science. Not only does this stand out across the entire competition, but this stands out amongst any lunar eclipse image okay. I've ever seen. Absolutely amazing image. And now I'm here joined by the very talented Laszlo Franchix, who joins us to talk about his astrophotography career and his awards this year. Laszlo, welcome to our live stream. It's great to have you here. Thank you and it's much. wonderful to meet you again, having met you a few times before, because as I understand it, this is well, how, how many images have you had shortlisted? This is my 18th. Your uh, 18th shortlisted image. Shortlisted, yes. 18th. So from initially becoming shortlisted, you're now the overall winner of the competition. How does it feel? I, I can tell you, how, but uh, a plan or a huge route, a working on a route was accomplished. It, it comes to um, a kind of end, which it's a beginning, maybe. I hope it's a beginning at that end. I mean, it's exciting just watching you coming up to the stage to accept your award. And it seems you have a lot of fans. I suppose your name is quite well known because they were cheering you on every time you stood up. It seemed like everybody yes. erupted. Um, so obviously, it's a very well-earned prize. Now, Laszlo, I have a few questions for you. Obviously, congratulations on your multiple awards this year. You've won the overall prize and our moon with Into the Shadow, but you also won the last ever robotic scope prize with Infrared Saturn. And these are obviously two very different approaches to two different objects. So could you tell us a little bit about how you got into astrophotography and how you came to be doing what you're doing with these well, various approaches today? This is a long story. Go for it. Okay. So uh, if you want to find the relation between the two images, don't think that uh, the relation is in the object. So um, solar system, solar system, you know. The, the relation is, is about the, the idea to do something beyond the, the, the normal photography. So, so step a little bit forward and, and give a side that was not given before. So, of course, the, the two images are really, really uh, two kind of images. But uh, the new side, the new idea, was a basic of both. So you're all about pushing the envelope, it seems. Yes, new ideas yes, yes. and I'm, pursuing I'm, new ways. I'm, I am following the, the world best astrophotographers. I can say big names, of course, Damian Pinch or, or Alan Friesman or Robert von Hansen. So they are the best, uh, the well, best known astrophotographers. And, and I can see through their images the limits of astrophotography, mm. the amateur astrophotography. Mm. And, uh, and uh, with a huge work 
with many thinking, with fantasy, I, I could I could step a little bit further, do it with through the limits, behind the limits, and these were two um, experiments. We an both know, I think, an experimental movie. it's a very good way to catch the eyes of judges in this competition to uh, do something that hasn't really been done before and take that extra leap, which is clearly your whole approach. So, just thinking about Into the Shadow, though, it's a wonderful composition. Myself and some colleagues were here ridiculously early in the morning to witness this eclipse. It was the eclipse of January this year, if I recall. Absolutely beautiful eclipse to see. Um, how did you achieve this image? How did you do it? It's magical. It's a terrible story because there, there was last year a most, the most spectacular uh, moon eclipse and it's in Hungary. The, the whole country was covered with clouds. At the day, at the night. That's a very relatable and after, story. It was beautiful weather and uh, well, I was very angry. So, uh, yeah. I had planned and it was cut by the, the better weather. And, and in January we had a terrible weather, but but this uh, this uh, disappointment of the bad weather made me thinking and and just just turning up my fantasy. If if I had a had a short night at that uh, during the, the eclipse of January, what could I do better? than before. And, and somehow it came to my mind that a series of images could show the whole process, the whole phenomena. Now I had a look at some of the technical information that you supplied us here to explain your method and it seems that you used stars as anchor points such that yes. you would really capture the true motion of the moon across the sky. B basically I'm a deep sky astrophotographer. Mm. Uh, these are just routes in the other way but I'm basically, I have this sky, the deep sky uh, Technique. And the deep sky, uh, the, the basic of the deep sky astrophotography is stacking images uh, using stars. And it came to my mind that, wow, I, I can see the stars because the moon during the eclipse is faint. Yes. And I can see the stars and I can uh, reveal the real motion using the stars. That, that was just like, that was uh, uh, the idea of the te technology. Uh, but uh, the idea, uh, was not uh, came to my mind on the roof of my house, looking at the minus five degrees to the moon. Uh, it, it, it was it was maybe in, in the room, and they were just sinking under the clouds. What shall I do with this moon eclipse if I had a had a chance? Absolutely amazing! I think you really made the most of it. I mean. I've never seen an eclipse shot like it, and I don't think anybody on our judging panel had ever seen anything quite like it. And even though a lunar eclipse is not terribly rare, in my opinion, a, an eclipse shot like that is, is one in a million. It's absolutely amazing. Well, as a many time shortlisted entrant and now overall winner, it would be remiss of me not to ask you this, because I think anybody watching would love to know, how do you win a competition like this? If somebody came to you and said, I want to get into astrophotography, what would you say to them? Oh. Oh, I was just thinking what an answer I could give them. <laughs> but it's really difficult. Uh, two years ago, I, I won the, the moon category with Blue Taiho. Uh, it was a clover. You know. And uh, I was asked to tell something to want to, want to do with this competition. Something with the competition. And, and, I, and I told them just to it. Find, uh, find an amateur astrophotographer, uh, not an amateur, an amateur uh, astronomer and go work with them and just find your own path. But now I would say another thing, uh, learn, learn about photography. Not only about astrophotography, not only about astronomy. The astronomy is an exact science. You can learn it easily with huge work, but learn about photography. Photography is the kind of art. It is either, think, either kind of thinking. It needs other ideas, not only science type ideas, but art like ideas. And, and I'm missing uh, many times this kind of uh, aspect of, of astrophotos, the, the art aspect. And, and, and find that art aspect, it is my suggestion to... And that's to something you've done so well, is that art-science crossover. Beautiful works of art that tell a scientific story in some way, that merge your understanding of photography and astronomy together. 
Laszlo, it's a wonderful image. Congratulations once again. Thank, and thank you, you so much for again. joining us. I'm now, if you tuned into our stream last year, you may well remember Thea and her father, Roger Hutchinson. Thea placed in our competition last year, and she placed again this year with her image, Daytime Saturn. And we have made a film all about how Thea goes out to take her images of, uh, I should say, Daytime Venus rather than Daytime Saturn. And coming after that, we're gonna meet another one of our young Astronomy Photographer of the Year prize-winning images, and his father too. So join us again in a few moments' time. I like music, art, and English. I'm not the best at maths, but I do enjoy some parts of physics. It all kind of blends into my astrophotography passion. I guess I've been exposed to astrophotography from quite a young age. Four years ago, when we moved, I mean, that's the main reason we moved in here, because it had space for an observatory. Not the usual reason for moving into a new house, but um, yeah, we wanted room for an observatory, so when he got his observatory, I definitely kept on going out there and it became more of something that I could do as well, since it was just always set up. Some people think you can only take pictures during the night, but you can also take them during the day. It is particularly true with the planets and especially the sun. I took my photo of Venus very early in the morning. My dad helps me with the setting up. It is a really nice bonding activity between us. He likes the science aspect, the technology aspect of it, but I I like the kind of creative, picturesque side of it. The images that you first capture do look a bit like a flaming, wobbly planet. Up until the bit where you compress them all together, it doesn't look right at all. But it's when you add them all together where you realise, oh wait, no, this has come out pretty good. And here we are back at the National Maritime Museum's new exhibition just opened and I'm joined by superstar father-son duo, both shortlisted this year. We've got Rob and Tom Mogford and I have some questions for you guys. Well, you've both been shortlisted with three very different images this year. So we've got a nebula and also a galaxy and the moon. So why on earth did you pick these particular subjects? Let's um, perhaps start with you, Rob. Um... Well, the Horsehead Nebula that I did was uh, it's probably the first image I ever saw of when I was about seven, eight years old in the textbook mm -hmm. and uh, captured my imagination from that time. Um, and first year in proper astrophilosophy did last year, so I thought I'd have a go at trying to capture it for myself. That's, that's so you that. jumped in the deep end, basically, there. I did. <laughs> and, um, and yourself, Tom? Uh, yeah, it was also my first year, so the Andromeda Galaxy is quite a big galaxy. Uh, it actually in the sky, so it meant it was relatively easy to capture, so the error for margin was a bit bigger, so I didn't have to worry as much about things like tracking and stuff, which I'm sort of new to, so I picked that one basically for that. Um, and also, I uh, chose the moon, because when I was out in France, it was such clear skies, and it was almost a full moon at the time that I took it. Uh, it was just so bright that you couldn't even photograph anything else. So it was like the only thing that you could really go for. And it was just sort of sometimes just it's just a bit out. selfish. Just yeah, kind of steals the show, out. right? <laughs> well, let's start with Andromeda if we can. Let's go back to that. your image M31 Andromeda Galaxy. It's a timeless object, absolutely beautiful image. Now, what is it that you find kind of inspiring about photographing, you know, nearby galaxies? Is there something in particular that draws you to that? Uh, to do with this kind of scale, it is so far away. I mean, about just over two and a half million light years away, isn't it? So to be able to take an image just with that much detail from your back garden, I just think it's really incredible to be honest. So, it's a yeah. really wonderful rendition and it's always amazing to see a familiar object and then just think, nope, that is a shortlist worthy image right there, even though it's a, a very frequent I think you really did a great justice to that galaxy. But then coming onto the moon now, 
here's something a little unusual because in your image of the moon we see some colour. Yeah. So tell me about that. Is that something you sought out or did that come out by accident? Um, well, after I'd done the uh, mosaic of my still frames from the video, um, we are in Photoshop and I sort of decided to adjust some of the histograms. Initially I was going for a bit more contrast, but then I realised I'd sort of captured some of the natural colour of the moon with the different mineral deposits on the surface. And so I thought, why not sort of bring some of that out there without going too over the top to make it seem unrealistic and you know, spoil the image. It's a very natural process for sure. Um, now, speaking of colour, Rob, well, you took an image with one colour channel, but you decided not to submit it in black and white. So in your image, we have a colourful but monochrome image. So how did you come to that decision? I think it, the, um, it's an emission nebula that the horse head nebula sits in front of. And that's predominantly hydrogen alpha, which is a red natural colour. So I thought I would be adventurous, try something slightly different and take the stars out of the image and just really, really push the red in that image and just see, see what it, how it come out. And, uh, I can tell you that when the so judges saw the image, there was a sort of wave of reaction. There was an audible reaction from the judges because as we've seen from the prize winning images, there are an increasing number of monochrome images coming in, but you're the first I've seen who's chosen to say, well, let's color it in anyway. And it really does add amazing drama yeah, to that yeah. area of the sky. Now, I, um, I have to ask you, both of you this really, what are your plans for next year? Because clearly you've mastered astrophotography. So are you gonna find something obscure? Are you gonna perfect what you already know? What's the plan? So perhaps starting with you, Tom. Uh, well, I'm sort of interested in doing a few more nebulas maybe this year. Um, obviously, I've done a galaxy, I've done our moon, so it sort of seems like the right next step. Um, sort of, it's like a trip I want to try and go to the University of the US, so maybe the North American Nebula is an option. Fantastic. Really good looking nebula, yeah. you get loads of colour and detail and stuff, so yeah, that's definitely uh, something I'm looking out for. So you've got a clear path, and um, Rob, have you thought about next year's entries? I've been uh, working on a mosaic uh, over the summer. Oh, of the, okay, this uh, is a scoop, by the way. <laughs> You've been working on a mosaic, okay. Are we allowed to know where this mosaic is? In uh, the sky? It's the Veil Nebula. The so Veil Nebula. Capturing the whole, Beautiful whole of the veil. So, it's, a, it's been a tricky subject, though, so we'll see how it, we're still processing it at the moment. So we'll. Well, if I'm judging out, next but, year, uh, no doubt I will come across it. Uh, so. I'll try to forget that your name's attached to it. No bias <laughs> on our judging panel, but I'll be interested to see that it sounds like a really good target. Uh, yeah. And a question for you both. Obviously, you know, your shortlisted entrance in the, in the World Cup of Astrophotography. So naturally, people are going to be wanting to know what is the secret. Uh, so, Tom, starting with you, what would you say to somebody who wanted to enter? Probably patience. I actually initially, one of the first things I did was the Dumbbell Nebula. And at the time I thought it was quite a good image, but then I moved on to obviously my images of my Andromeda in the moon. And I looked back and realised it could have been improved so much more if I'd just taken more time to collect more data. And just simply, it would have just been a much better image. I also might have another go at that in the future as well, but you see it's not really the right time of the year before. Fantastic. Um, Rob, do you have any advice for a new company? Uh, so don't be afraid to make any mistakes. You know, there's a, I mean, you look at the images that are here tonight, there's a whole range from ones just taken with a DSLR, you know, in the desert, to deep space images, you know, and, you know, any budget, you know, you can take some amazing, fantastic images. Did either of you ever see yourselves, uh, you know, winning prizes in a competition like this. So, not so. We visited this, uh, the exhibition of last year and that was sort of what we realised oh, we may as well just sort of submit them. Didn't really think yeah. much of them really at the time. So it's a bit overwhelming to be honest. So, yeah. Now you are a part of the exhibition forevermore and no doubt lots of people <laughs> in the exhibition right now are probably trying to get hold of you <laughs> to ask you exactly how you did it. Listen, it's wonderful to have you here. Congratulations again to you, Tom, and also Thank to you, Rob, and thanks for Thank joining you. us. And if you remember or have been looking forward to uh, the announcements this evening, you may know that our People and Space winner this year featured a furry friend in the name of Floyd, the first dog to uh, end up winning a prize in the competition, along with Ben Bush for his beautiful photograph 
Ben, Floyd and the core. I'm going to be talking to Ben Bush in a few moments' time, but do please enjoy the making of that photograph. I'll see you in a moment. I've always been fascinated by photography. I've got all the old cameras from my mum and my granddad. At school, it was kind of my escape. I didn't mix that well. So I had the school camera in the dark room. Yeah, I just loved doing that and was fascinated by it and the process behind it. The majority of my work starts as a dog walk. And then the byproduct is I spend time taking photos while my dogs play. And they have the same feelings about the environment. They love it. And that's what it is about for me. It's trying to capture the, the feeling I have and the respect and love I have for the universe and the world around us. Capturing the rotation of the Earth in a photo or capturing the galactic core of the Milky Way in a photo. It's all there, it's all visible. you just got to know where to look and, and spend a bit of time looking into what is above us and around us and about us and, and I find it fascinating. I love that photo and the fact that it's me and my dog make it a very special photo for me. Set my camera on the tripod, put a remote control in, got my, my dog Floyd to come and sit with me on the top of the hill while I held his head, stroked him and whispered, don't move, don't move. Probably took about 30 photos and it, amongst those 30 photos there was one where we were both still. And, uh, well, welcome back to our live stream here at the Insight Investment Astronomy Photographer of the Year Awards 2019. A little bit of a mix-up. We won't actually be speaking to Ben himself, but we did have a chance to see how his beautiful and uh, really heartwarming shot came together. It certainly won the hearts of the judges. I think a lot of the judges are dog lovers. I know myself included. But we have someone else here to talk to us. Uh, we've just shared a stage under we some very did. hot lights, we haven't did. we? we did. And uh, I'm overheating. You're coping really well, John. Oh, I don't know, a little bit over. <laughs> uh, what a wonderful chance to see all the amazing images and other photographers who created them, to see them get the honour they deserve. Isn't it's amazing. So you can so hear rewarding. the hustle and bustle of the gallery yeah. behind us yeah. here. People are enjoying these images now to the fullest on the beautiful light boxes yes. here in Greenwich. John, I've got some questions for you. Oh, good. Yeah, well. finally I get to ask the questions. I'll do my best. Okay, so, question one. Well, it's been a stellar year for the competition, no pun intended, hasn't it? Um, what are your personal thoughts on the winning selection this year? And are there any favourites hidden among them? Oh, my goodness. Uh, so many. The overall winner of that wonderful transition of the lunar eclipse. It's rather like looking at every phase of the lunar eclipse simultaneously. And I always have, you always have a funny feeling about the overall winner. And that was the one, as soon as you're scrolling through the first shots in the early stages of judging, there's always that shot that you have a certain feeling about. And you think, oh, that's probably going to be the one that might just do it. I'll be surprised if it doesn't. Mm. And that was certainly one that I felt very, very um, strongly about. Uh, the other shots in the Our Moon category of that um, the lunar halo behind the cloud. Seven colour feather yes. of the moon. Feather of the moon. Yes. The, 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 the cloud looked so icy, yeah. almost like a, a noctilucent cloud, but yeah. nearer. And that was a, a beautiful and unusual, very inventive way to depict the moon and the phenomena going on around it. Each year, the, the, the images just become more inventive, more unusual, more innovative. You know, where people's imaginations are taking these shots are just incredible. And this collection, who knows what they will inspire for 2020? It just, it just mesmerizes you each year, slack jawed with stupefaction. Clearly, I mean, the way you talk about it, obviously you love the subject, yeah. as we all do here. Yeah. So, John, what got you interested in astronomy? Uh, I watched an episode of The Sky at Night when I was about six years old. That's relatable. Yeah. Very relatable. I think that's how so many of us I think started. it is, yeah. Uh, Sir Patrick Moore, the godfather of astronomy on television, as the space radio started, so did The Sky at Night on television. And Patrick just led us through it. 
so eccentric, so engaging, so brilliant, so knowledgeable. You, you just couldn't help but just watch him mesmerised. And he brought the subject to life. And once that happens to you, it stays with you forever. Um, so yes, it was an episode of The Sky at Night in 1976. Then I bought The Observer's Book of Astronomy by Patrick Moore. Borrowed my dad's binoculars from the cupboard and looked at the moon that evening, saw the craters and all the features, that's that, you're done after that. It really is a show that spans generations, isn't it? The first episode of The Sky at Night aired about two months before my dad was born. Oh my and a whole generation later, I would end up being on The Sky at Night with our mutual friends, the late great Sir Patrick Moore. And it was remarkable to think about how he had persisted. He was just a rock throughout those generations. Actually, as we, we broke convention and sort of broke the competition this year by having two winners yeah. in the prize that he lent his name to, mm -hmm. the prize that I think honours his legacy as someone that brought so many people to the subject, the Best Newcomer Prize. I wonder if we can get Patrick's thoughts on that. What would he think of having two winners in the prize? Well, I think it was the perfect compromise. Both images were very contrasting, both equally worthy, and so I think why be intransigent and simply go one way? No, 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 no. Give them both honours because astronomy is for everyone. The more winners, the better. This is exactly <laughs> what it was like being on TV with Patrick Moore ten years ago. <laughs> exactly. Oh, John, I have to ask you some questions that have come in here okay. from some of our viewers to our live. We're, we're going out on lots of different sites and streams and people have been sending in questions. Are there any um, astronomy and space events coming up that we should be looking forward to? I'm looking forward to the next total solar eclipse oh, yes. uh, in Argentina next December. Mm -hmm. I missed the recent one uh, in Chile. Oh, I was lucky enough to see it, oh, but it I won't rub it in. One, I won't rub it? it in. It was a good one, yes. Pete Lawrence uh, was telling me that the, the, the eclipse sun seemed so enormous because it you had a sort of a moon illusion going on because yes, the eclipse it was, was low down. in the sky. Yes, yeah. But you'll be seeing the next one, won't you? I, I'm going to make sure I do. What about Antarctica 2021? Absolutely. Yes. I, I, I'm determined. If there's one thing, you know, the disappointment of missing Chile last year, it sort of made me determined to see every single one that ever happens. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to make sure that I chase everyone and hopefully get to see I think them. you're going to see a large number of them, John. I think you will. Because everywhere you go, the sky is clear. That's why we call you John Clear Skies Culture here. Oh, I like that. Yes. I like that. I'm talking exactly. like Tom Baker. And there must be some sort of uh, cosmic device to wipe away the clouds. Sort of a cloud vacuum. Yes, I'll invent that. I'll invent we need to bring John back in the room, though. Yes. I have another personal Hello question again. for John. <laughs> now, John, you've shown me some of your photographs before that you've yeah. taken of the sky. Yes. So uh, tell me this. What's your favourite object to photograph? Oh, always the moon. Always the moon. Always the moon. Because it's so... Um, you can do it with a smartphone. Uh, a nice wide-angle eyepiece on the telescope that, is, that connects with the... just sort of syncs with the lens of the camera phone. And whenever there is a uh, good clear sky and the moon is rising, I love the atmospheric phases when it's rising and it's still red. And you can watch it change in colour, from red to orange to yellow to ivory to white to silver. I, I love that transition. And Patrick um, himself felt that the moon offered him a lifetime of exploration. I believe he published his first paper about it when he was eight or nine years old, yes. lived to the amazing age of 89 years and never really got bored studying the moon in all of that time. No, never. I think every time you look at it, it's different. Mm. It's rising in a different place, the, the, the surroundings of it are different, different phase. It's fascinating every time. I've got an ambition with the moon to see a really thin slither, you know, the day before or after a new moon. Mm. I've never managed to catch one of those yet. A first sighting of a yeah. new crescent moon. Yeah, I'd love to see that. Oh, um, yes, and a very challenging photographic subject. In fact, if, if we had, this is another question that's come in now from our viewers. Mm -hmm. If you were going to take a winning image of the moon or you were going to recommend somebody to do that, I know you've spoken a little bit about it before using just your phone. So again, what would your advice be? Somebody's just got their phone, maybe a telescope on them. What should they do? I think you've just got to look for that evocative atmosphere and a blend of the scientific astronomical accuracy reflect the science part of it, but also have an image that gives the feeling of why we all love astronomy. The peace it gives you, the fascination that it gives you, that feeling of just lifting you above all the tedious things like Brexit that people carp on about in this temporal era. 
we have to look beyond that to see what's that wider ecosystem of the solar system and the universe beyond. There's great peace and wonder to be found in all that. I'm sounding very fluffy here. But <laughs> you just have to capture all of that magic on your phone's camera yeah. through the eyepiece. I think that's the beauty of the competition because you, we have the winners who are those amazing experts with those meticulously prepared images of the galaxy and the deep space objects mm -hmm. as well as those opportunistic ones. Where I, I remember the, the shot of the... Um, I think it might have been, I'm trying to remember the year, 2014 or 15, and one of the most successful images was uh, a shot taken by a seven-year-old lad on a plane on of a the plane eclipse. With a 2015 tablet. 2015 it would have been, yeah. That's right. A little mini tablet. And we've, we've repeated the success of the tablet. One of these this year with Casper's image of Van Eyck's moon, again taken yeah. with a tablet. So very, very accessible technology interpreting a timeless world, yeah. bringing it to life. Yeah and just giving us connection to a world that I think we both agree is one of the top photographic oh, subjects and yes. easy to see how it became this year's overall winner. Yes, completely, completely. I'm, I'm, going, to, um, I'm going to buy a print of it from the museum and put a frame <laughs> around it. And um, I think, actually, some of you watching will find this to be a very inspiring overall winner. But some of you, some of our viewers, John, may disagree and you may have your own ideas about who the winner should be this year. And that's why we will be returning our very popular People's Choice Award. So you can now begin to vote for your overall winner for the competition. That is open at rmg.co.uk forward slash people's choice. Put your votes in and in February next year, we'll be announcing the People's Choice winner for the exhibition. Perhaps it will be the same as the overall winner. Perhaps John's moony words have inspired you to choose another moon image, or perhaps it will be something completely different. It's your decision. And if you want to see those images, and you want to see them brilliantly jumping off the wall, then come down here to the National Maritime Museum in Greenwich, and come and visit the Insight Investment Astronomy Photographer of the Year 2019 exhibition. It is open right now. So come along as soon as you can. The images are absolutely fantastic. But that's all we have time for for our live view of the exhibition tonight. Do keep tracking us here on our various channels to get more insight about the images from our astronomers. And perhaps consider taking a copy of our book, which has also been published in line with the exhibition. It includes much more insight from the judges and from all of the astronomers up at the Royal Observatory Greenwich as well. But in the meantime, from John and I here, well, I suppose we'll say farewell and good night. Farewell. Here's to 2020. <laughs>